la 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 Hi, my name is Cynthia, and here's my friend Jennifer and Kent. We'd like to welcome you to our beautiful hometown, the city of North Miami. If I had to describe the city of North Miami, I would describe it as a, a hidden gem. That's definitely what I would call it. Right near us here, we have Pepper Park, beautiful courts. They actually just redid them. Uh, and it's a fantastic place to play. You'll catch me there three, four times a week. Our recreational facilities match up perfectly with what sports planners, event organizers, and visitors want most out of a destination. Each month is celebrated through an array of events that brings out over 50,000 attendees year-round. Warm weather and sunshine invites play for families, visitors, and sporting events. largest city in Miami-Dade County, North Miami is home to over 68,000 residents from all over the world, 800 businesses, and two major universities, Florida International University, as we know it, FIU, and Johnson and & Wales University, making our city one of the most diverse communities in the entire state of Florida. What about the enchanted forest? placed on 22 acres of tropical plants, trees, and animals in the heart of North Miami, offering city beauty, paved trails, pedestrian bridges, facilities, and private pony ride concessions for the kitties. The city maintains 11 beautiful parks and seven state-of-the-art community centers that offer programs and activities for all ages. My favorite place is the E. May Abel Public Library. Our newly renovated library is fully equipped with modern and contemporary furnishing, multiple reading rooms, spacious reading areas, innovative technologies, appealing collections, and you can even get a cup of coffee. Sonia Mia is South Florida's next iconic neighborhood, spreading across 183 acres. This master plan community will rise on the largest remaining parcel of undeveloped land in North Miami, east of Biscayne Boulevard. Uh, this dealership, Lexus of North Miami, has been here for six years now. This is the largest, best equipped um, Lexus dealership anywhere in the world. Um, North Miami is a city on the move. We are part of a city that actively encourages new business and makes it easy for these businesses to establish themselves in the city and to do business in North Miami. Being in this area has now enabled us to vastly expand our business. We've gone from selling 100 cars a month at our previous location to six or 700 cars a month here. Uh, this is a wonderful business environment. We are geographically situated um, at the north end of the county in between Aventura, Bell Harbor, Surfside, Sunny Isles. The, the area is centrally located. Um, it's a fabulous location. We're right on Biscayne Boulevard and the area around us is growing at a rapid pace. Um, I also am a member of the local Chamber of Commerce, and I see new businesses moving into the area all the time. The mayor's office, uh, the, the county commission, the city commission are all very pro-business and very proactive, and everyone here in the city stands ready, willing, and to help uh, new businesses get established in the area. So this is, this is a growing area. There's great access to retail. Um, there's a new Whole Foods in the neighborhood. 
and uh, I would recommend this area highly to anyone looking to ro relocate in South Florida. Jennifer's preference is the Contemporary Art Museum, which brings thousands of visitors each year and offers educational programs geared toward the community and its diverse population. MOCA continues to provide an extraordinary experience through the popular jazz concert outdoors the last Friday of each month. We'll be very happy to see you there. city to you welcome and see you soon good evening my name is mark and son Genty, host of 360 degree media and welcome in our today's special edition with a special guest adam adesley but before we go into that let's take a quick commercial break and we will be right back ou même qui malade, cap chercher au clinique sérieux, cap chercher bon docteur, bon spécialiste, pour jouer une santé au bac pressé pressé, référence à ce MJD Wellness and Community Center. Yo gen laboratoire pour yon fait tout test ou gen besoin, ak pharmacie pour yon affaires médicaments. Yo fait test, traitement ak prévention sida, yo fait test COVID. Quel que soit problème santé ou gen yon sucre, tension, cholestérol, asthma, ak tout autre maladie ou konne yo, rele yo pour appointement nan 786 534 38 96 avec ou sans assurance ou mettre les le recevoir timoun de 5 ans en op mené timoun yo adresse 822 not 10 25 suite suite 103 9 miami florida 33 161 yo l'ouvre lundi pour le vendredi de 9h à m pour 5h pm samedi de 10h à m pour 4h pm téléphone à cause 786 534 38 96 786 534 38 96 dans MGD Wellness and Community Center Zafè Santéo c'est priorité nous My name is Naomi Esther Blamir and I'm running for Florida Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services as the granddaughter of farmers a small business owner a community advocate and a mother I am running because we need a strong leader in Tallahassee who's going to advocate for community farming, clean water, small farmers, and a better environment for our families and our children. Do you know regular checkups are a necessity and shouldn't be considered a privilege? Regardless of age or circumstances, regular visits to a healthcare provider should never be taken for granted. MJD Wellness and Specialty Care provides top-tier primary care services in Miami and surrounding counties. Our primary focus is on letting people normalize taking responsibility for their bodies and being cautious of their everyday health. MJD Primary Care will enable you to find potential health issues before they become irreversible deadly diseases. We provide easy access to medical care which aims at focusing on your overall general health. From regular checkups to advanced screening, MJD Wellness and Specialty Care facilitates all. Don't wait for some significantly big problem to occur. Get yourself examined today at MJD. Visit www.mjdwellness.org for more information. Again, welcome back. My name again is Mark Anson Jansi, host of 360 Degree Media. As always, we bring you a special guest and we talk about the subject that matters. Today, we have Mr. Adam Hardesley. Mm -hmm. He is the Democratic nominee for Chief Financial Officer. There's many things that, Mr. Adam, we can say about you. You are a war veteran. You are a U.S. nuclear officer. You are an author, a husband a devoted citizen. What more can you tell us about you? Well, first off, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here in North Miami with you today. And we have so much to, to learn, learn from and share with the, the Haitian community, you know, especially since the, it's such a unique community ever since, geez, what, 1804, uh, being, being independent and being so resilient. But uh, thank you again for having me. The chief financial officer is one of the top positions in all of Florida. It's on the Florida cabinet. It's the third highest position in the state. It's uh, the head of the state treasury. It's the head of the Office of Insurance Regulation. 
It's on the clemency board, the state board of administration. It's strangely enough, the state fire marshal. And I think I really do have a lot to offer to this position. As you mentioned, I spent eight years in the United States Navy. I was a nuclear submarine officer. I did a combat tour in Iraq during the height of the second Gulf War and went on over 200 combat missions. I was there uh, from 2006 to 2007. I was about 30, 35 miles away when Saddam Hussein was executed. It's a very active time. I was a small business owner, worked for a major Fortune 500 company. And then I ran for and and, and held a position in the Florida legislature. I was the first Democrat elected to Eastern, uh, to represent Eastern Hillsborough County in over 20 years. Now I'm running to be the next chief financial officer of the state of Florida. Apparently and obviously, you are a very accomplished man. What motivates you to transit from a successful military career to the political world? Uh, well, first off, thank you for that compliment. Uh, and really, it all, it all came down to service for me. You know, my father volunteered for a tour in Vietnam. Uh, you know, I volunteered in the Navy and then volunteered for a combat tour in Iraq. And I was never very political until 2018 when somebody in my state house district was running that, just to make it easy to say, was a bully, and nobody was standing up to this person. Uh, I'd never run for a political office, but people kept asking if I would. It was a heavily Republican district, so we didn't have a lot of help, uh, but just my wife and I worked the campaign, and we were able to, to flip that district by over 12 percentage points and make that a, a Democratic district. And it really, it just really comes down to service and trying to stand up to bullies and, and doing what's right and what's best for the citizens in my community. Understandable. You wrote a book, Accidental Politician. How does one accidentally find themselves in the political world, as you just <laughs> mentioned, from the, the, the town that you, as uh, in your background, that you see that he was a bully and you have decided to take up on that bully? However... Now you are a politician. How different it is from your previous life? It's, it's so different. You know, uh, I was just a, a private citizen, just like the 22 million other Floridians, you know, small business owner, just living, living my life and, you know, with my wife and, and our dog. Uh, and then people started asking if, if I would run. I had no ambition to originally. That's why I, I called it accidental politician. I didn't quite stumble into it, but people stumbled into finding me to get me to run. You know, it was, it was a short campaign, wasn't expected to win, but we, we pulled off the upset and spent two years in the Florida legislature. Uh, you know, and then I was recruited to run again for this position. People from all over the state uh, asked if I would run. And I, I almost thought I was done with politics, but here we are again, kind of answering that call to serve. Okay. A lot of people knows that the CFO, the chief financial officer, keep the book record to, is taking up on the finance of the state. Mm-hmm. However, there's many other things that the fire marshal, uh, the pension plan, uh, many other things that the CFO does. Uh, can you please explain in more details what are the what are the uh, the responsibilities? of the CFO. Sure. And one of the the major ones that's affecting every person that lives in Florida right now is the CFO is also the head of the Office of Insurance Regulation. And I don't know if if anybody watching has noticed there if they rent that their rent has gone up or if they own uh, their home, their property insurance has gone up. Florida is in a major property insurance crisis. It's getting news coverage all over the United States. And the, the CFO is supposed to protect you from that happening. We've seen, we had a special legislative session even this past year trying, trying to fix insurance in Florida. And the vast majority of Floridians did not want their rates to go up and their coverage to go down. But guess what happened? Their rates went up and their coverage went down and the legislature gave insurance companies a $2 billion corporate bailout coming from your tax dollars. We've, we've been in this situation, we've seen it coming down the road for five years now. The current CFO has done nothing to protect Floridians. He's, he's cost you all money, everybody in the state. This is one of the major issues that not just I'm talking about, but people running for the state house and state senate are talking about, people running for Congress are talking about. You've seen Charlie Crist, our brand new nominee for governor, talking about it. 
You've seen Val Demings, our nominee for U.S. Senate, talking about it. It's one of the major issues on Florida's mind. And that, that buck stops at the CFO's office. And the current CFO has failed you on it. So that's one of the major things that's, that's on people's minds right now that the CFO should be doing. Before we get into that, because uh, we will definitely, people will ask you on the campaign trail, why are you running? <laughs> that's really one of the main reasons. You know, just like every other Floridian, I've, I've been having some of the, the same insurance struggles as everybody else. I've had people from all over the state telling me the problems and struggles they've been having. We did a tour of the Panhandle about a month and a half ago. Hurricane Michael came through over four years ago. There are still homes with blue tarps for roofs and still homes that have been destroyed because insurance companies have been fighting those legitimate insurance claims and stopping people from, from moving on with their lives and rebuilding their lives. And it's been such a struggle for folks all across the state of Florida. We've had five insurance companies become insolvent already this year alone, and potentially 17 more have their ratings decrease, which means they will have a reduced ability to do, to do business in Florida. Just this year, we've had half a million Floridians get dropped by their property insurance with no recourse. Insurance is broken and it's costing people money and nobody else in the state. I, I didn't have a primary. Nobody else in the state was willing to stand up to this, to, to the current CFO to try to fix this. Just like in 2018, when nobody else stood up to this bully, again in 2022, nobody was willing to stand up to this person. So people asked if I would. And just like when I joined the military, that sense of service, I, I found it hard to say no. So here I am. Completely understand. About 400,000 households in Florida currently do not have home insurance. If elected, how will you tackle this issue? There's, there's a lot of things we can do. First off, the current insurance regulator doesn't have a background in insurance. He's just there to rubber stamp anything the insurance lobbyists and Ron DeSantis wants. We need a person in that role who has a background in insurance and who's ready to protect consumers, not just be a rubber stamp for everything. You know, the insurance industry in Florida, it's gotten everything it's wanted for so long, just like a kid in a candy store. If you just let them eat whatever they want, eventually they become sick. Our insurance industry is sick. Besides that, we need to look at what other states have done to be successful, to protect their citizens when it comes to home insurance. We're not the only state that has hurricanes. All the states across the South, Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, all of hurricanes, we're the only state with this major insurance crisis. What are they doing right that we are not? Again, the current CFO has had five years to do that analysis, and he's decided not to. He's sided with insurance companies. I'm ready to side with Floridians and consumers to try to save them money. Thank you. Let's take another commercial break, and we will be right back. La 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 Bel paysage avec belle couleur. Haïti, c'est sans café, car monter aime les matins. C'est sans la housse qui fait poser. Pour fler dire qu'à bougeonner. Haïti, c'est pas simple, cascade pichon avec sodo. C'est Akade, la citadelle. C'est la bâtie avec Marigo. Haïti, c'est la vallée, c'est Bossali, avec Sabrico, c'est Mona, Selbik, Makaya, c'est Mamla, Dakmon, Pilbo. Haïti, son douce macos, c'est un point et pistage grillé, son gicolé qui boube en force, son bouteille cola bien glacée. Haïti, son bon griot, son bon fritaille, un bon tasso. Son bon légume avec Syrik, son bon diri avec la loup. 
Haïti, son bon bouillon, son soupe joumou à tout piment. Son bon cassave avec mon bas, coca trempé dans un cassin. Haïti, son bon domboué, camariné, non bon sauce bois. Son bois cochon, un bon clairin. Haïti, son bon café du soir. Haïti chéri, pour jamais aimer. Moi, viens déposer ticket, moi, non, mais. Haïti chéri, pour jamais adorer. Pas guère, rien qu'à j'en fais, moi, quitter. Haïti chéri, pour jamais aimer. Moi, viens déposer ticket. Haïti, son belle musique, son bon à pied, son troubadou, son son kata cérémonie, on son kwashi, on son tambou. Haïti, c'était au goût, c'était des ancêtres qui étaient pour nous, c'est là l'esclavage taboli, son tel liberté à vaudou. Haïti, c'est festival, c'est dix souris, c'est fête champette. Sa animation en carnaval, c'est yon tisi le pas j'en fret. Haïti, son bon basic, son domino, son bon toiset, son réveillon, côté qui gen bouillon, c'est la gen gen betet. Haïti, c'est yon combi paysan kap sec le latin, c'est ti machin yon kap desan, pou yal goumen yon la vichet. Haïti, c'est Timounio qui a brevé de yon bel afdi. C'est de l'origol la cap de son. A kon goûte le bras la terri. Haïti, c'est yon batan, nan depi après 12 janvier. C'est la boucle et vos mauvais centres. Chaque long t'y la pli fin tombe. Haïti, c'est sous béton pour kon la vraie réalité. C'est yon qui triste, mais grâce à Dieu. C'est pas les seuls man qui a chanté. Haïti chéri, pour jamais remer. Moi, viens déposer ticket, moi, non, mais. Haïti chéri, pour jamais adorer. Pas guère, rien qu'à j'en fais, moi, quitter. Haïti chéri, pour jamais remer. Chérie, pour jamais adorer, pas gué un et cap j'en fais, mais quitter où? Pas j'en quitter. Thank you and welcome back. In this special edition, we have the Democratic nominee, Adam Watsley. Hattersley. Hattersley, thank you. <laughs> and I would like to ask you, if elected, what are your plans to increase economic development in the state of Florida? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. One specifically that Democrats have been trying to push for several years in the legislature is to bring the film industry back to Florida. You know, we've seen... I don't know how many TV shows that take place in Florida or movies that, that are set in Florida. They're all filmed in Georgia. It's because the, the Georgia legislature has given certain incentives to bring film companies to Georgia to be able to, to bring jobs, economic development, and money to the state. And Florida used to do that. I don't know why we stopped, but we can do that again and become a friendly place for the entertainment industry in Hollywood to come and film all their movies here. That's just, that's just one little thing that, that literally the legislature could do in one session, and we could have that film industry bring billions and billions of dollars back to Florida. But not only that, by 
what we just talked about before by, by helping to fix the property insurance world here in Florida will give individual citizens more disposable money. They will, won't have to spend as much on insurance, so they'll have more money to spend on other things. And that will encourage additional commerce on retail uh, for the food and, and entertainment industry, which is our largest industry in Florida, and to let people spend more disposable cash which would encourage more businesses to come to Florida because there'll be more profit here. So simply by helping to work on fixing that one major issue, we can affect the Florida's economy on such a vast, vast way. Thank you. Uh, if elected, you will be sitting on the clemency board. Yes. And for a lot of black and white people, they do not feel that the system is fair to them, especially when it comes to clemency. How will your office implement your duty by making it right and fair for black and white people. I'm not saying that other races, other ethnicity should not have a shot, but a lot of people, as I mentioned, feel the system is working against them. They're right. It hasn't been fair. It hasn't been fair since, believe it or not, uh, the last time Charlie Chris was governor, when he was able to grant clemency with his cabinet to over 20, uh, 25,000 returning citizens. But the current administration, has granted clemency to less than 100 citizens. The current CFO has acted instead of somebody who's trying to help returning citizens get their right to vote back, the current CFO has acted as a roadblock. We need an advocate in this role instead of a barrier. So just by having a Democrat and having me as your next CFO will go miles and miles to making clemency a much more fair and equitable practice. Instead of having a barrier, and a roadblock, you'll have an advocate, which is something we haven't had since the last Democratic CFO, which is Alex Sink, who left office in 2011. You talk a lot about um, Alex Sink. You talk about uh, the current CFO. How will you deal with the current situation different? Because we come from a pandemic. How different will you deal with the situation than the current administration? <sighs> Regarding specifically? Regarding the, the economy, regarding the economy. Well, and we've already mentioned a few things. The CFO in, in Tallahassee has been known to be, how shall I say, AWOL. Do you know that term? Absent without leave. It's a, it's a military term. Um, he, he's, he's not very present in Tallahassee. He just does basically does what Ron DeSantis tells him to do. We need a CFO who's ready to protect Floridians and protect consumers. By having a CFO who's actively trying to help Floridians instead of just his wealthy campaign donors, that's going to be such a major sea change in Tallahassee that we haven't seen in so long. We need an advocate in that role. We need somebody to, to, to stand up and aggressively act in the office of the insurance uh, consumer insurance advocate, which, again, we haven't had since Sean Shaw filled that role when while Alex Inc. was the CFO. We need an aggressive person in that spot to protect Floridians instead of just a, a laissez-faire kind of mindset that they've, that they've had up there and just letting the office run without direction. You are a Democrat. Yes. And Democrats are a minority both in the chamber and the Senate. How is your administration, we know there's a current election as for right now, if Democrats do not take the House and the Senate and eventually the governors and other cabinet position. How will you be able to fulfill those promises? So there, there's a few ways. First off, as a former le member of the legislature, I already have the relationships that you need with most of the representatives and senators to get legislation moving. I did have a, a reputation for bipartisan legislation. I had legislation to help children with developmental disabilities, veterans, uh, victims of, of sexual assault, uh, teachers, firefighters, that were some of the most uh, co-sponsored bills in all the legislature. And just because you're in the minority party does not mean you can't get things done. Nikki Fried showed us that when in her first year in 2019, uh, the state hemp industry regulation, it was House Bill 333, was passed unanimously or near unanimous, no, it was unanimously by the legislature and she was able to work with a Republican to sponsor that bill in the House for her. So just having those relationships 
gives me a head start on being able to push some of this legislation through. Completely understand. You talk about many things. We talk about the insurance industry. You're also responsible for the healthcare industry. Is there any plan? Because we know the state of Florida rejected uh, the federal money that was supposed to be uh, allocated to families in need. Do you have any plan to tackle those people that cannot afford insurance or do not have insurance to their employer and uh, that are not qualified to form the ACA, the Affordable Care Act? Being able to, to push the legislature into accepting those Medicaid dollars is something that, that we haven't, again, that we've never had in the CFO's office because the last, again, the last Democratic CFO, that wasn't an issue yet. 37 out of the 50 states have accepted those extra federal Medicaid dollars. I don't know why we haven't, but having somebody there in the financial office pushing that through legislation will be key, especially since one thing that Floridians need to know, everybody pays their federal Medicare and Medicaid taxes as part of their taxes. Since we did not accept that federal Medicaid expansion, uh, uh, expansion, our Medicaid dollars are going to subsidize healthcare in other states without getting the benefit ourselves. Our residents, as long, we just need to make sure they know that. If Florida residents had a better handle on this and, and we were able to educate the public on that, they would demand the legislature expand Medicaid. So educational program, as well as working with the legislature to push, to push that in a logical bipartisan manner, would go a long way to getting those Medicaid dollars back to Florida. We're getting almost at the end of our show. However, uh, we have to talk about pension because it's a big concern for aviation community. We are firefighters, mm -hmm. we are government employees, we are teachers, a lot of teachers, we are nurses. Uh, we know the state of Florida, about 27 states before the war, uh, during the war in Ukraine, um, that uh, when Vladimir Putin invaded uh, Ukraine, there we drawn the money from from, from Russia, but Florida did not. So we lost about 300,000. 300 million. 300 million plus, I'm sorry, 200 million plus. Uh, how will you be able to tackle that issue? Because we have lost money. Mm -hmm. People, uh, hardworking people of Florida have lost money. You're right. How you intend to deal with that problem? So the, from the pension fund, you're right. Teachers, firefighters, County workers, city workers, that pension fund is, is administered by what's called the State Board of Administration, the SBA, the governor, the attorney general, and the CFO. Now, the CFO is a major role in, in investing those dollars. Democrats across the state were begging the, the CFO to divest that $300 million from Russian companies when the war started because they knew the Russian economy was going to tank. And like you said, about half the country, half the states had that foresight and, with, and divested that money and saved their money. Now, I, I don't know why the CFO and the board of administration did not divest that $300 million. If I had to guess, it was because Democrats were asking, so they had to be contrary. They had to be on the other side, even though it was the right thing to do. They have absolutely failed in their fiduciary duty to Florida, to Florida citizens. They have failed in protecting that money, and they have cost us $300 million of our hardworking teachers and retirees pensions. So having somebody who's ready to look at data and look at logic and look at the actual economic market instead of only looking at politics will go a long way to protecting that money. Because now it's too late. It's gone. The CFO bet on Russia instead of betting on Floridians. But in the future, Having a CFO who doesn't care about politics and is only going to look at what's best for Floridians would have saved that money. If I had been your CFO when that war started, we would still have that $300 million. Okay. We are at the end. We're going to take our last break before the Mr. Haddam gives his final speech, and we will be right back. My name is Naomi Esther Blamir, and I'm running for Florida Commissioner of Agriculture and consumer services. As the granddaughter of farmers, a small business owner, a community advocate, and a mother, 
I am running because we need a strong leader in Tallahassee who's going to advocate for community farming, clean water, small farmers, and a better environment for our families and our children. Ou même qui malade, cap chercher une clinique sérieuse, cap chercher bon docteur, bon spécialiste pour jouer une santé au bac pressé pressé, référence à ce MJD Wellness and Community Center. Il y a un laboratoire pour aider à faire tout test où il y a besoin avec pharmacie pour régler les affaires médicaments. Il y a fait test, traitement, prévention sida, il y a fait test COVID. Quel que soit le problème santé où il y a sucre, tension, cholestérol, asthma et toute autre maladie où il y a, relé au pour appointement dans 786 534 38 96 avec ou sans assurance ou mettre les nous recevons tout le monde de 5 ans et hop mais n'est pas le adresse 822 9 10 25 suit suite 103 9 miami florida 33 161 je l'ouvre lundi pour et vendredi de 9h à m pour 5h pm samedi de 10h à m pour 4h pm téléphone à cause 786 534 38 96 786 534 38 96 dans MGD Wellness and Community Center affaires santé ou ses priorités nous Do you know regular checkups are a necessity and shouldn't be considered a privilege Regardless of age or circumstances regular visits to a healthcare provider should never be taken for granted MJD Wellness and Specialty Care provides top-tier primary care services in Miami and surrounding counties. Our primary focus is on letting people normalize taking responsibility for their bodies and being cautious of their everyday health. MJD Primary Care will enable you to find potential health issues before they become irreversible deadly diseases. We provide easy access to medical care which aims at focusing on your overall general health. From regular checkups to advanced screening, MJD Wellness and Specialty Care facilitates all. Don't wait for some significantly big problem to occur. Get yourself examined today at MJD. Visit www.mjdwellness.org for more information. Zami auditeur saison taxe arrivé. Nous devons chercher professionnel pour faire taxe nous. Année ça sous pas fil taxe ou non INI advisors. Nous pas responsable de VARS parce que taxe compliqué en pile année ça. Là on choisit INI advisors ou choisit pi bon parmi pi bon taxe préparé dans la communauté a. C'est des professionnels qui gagnent plusieurs dizaines d'années à fil taxe individuel, commercial, business, avec organisation. Office à l'ouvrir de 8h du matin pour 8h du soir, sorti dimanche pour arriver samedi. Y a pas chargé gros l'argent. En plus, sous gagnent au besoin. Yo ka baw yon advance up to 6000 dollars sous comme taxe ou a adresse 829 10 25 suite Nord Miami Florida 33 161 téléphone 305 640 80 35 305 640 80 35 reliou l'offre taxe ou nan INI advisors yo notaire papier gratis pour vous Hi my name is Naomi Blamir author coach and businesswoman I am here in our magnificent space, Balancing Life Workspace. Today is just an amazing day for us as an organization, for our vision and the trajectory of our future. Balancing Life Workspace is a space designed with you in mind. We've created a space where you can connect, create, and cultivate. It is an affordable workspace for the freelancer, for the independent contractor, for the startup, or for the person who's looking to downsize. Wherever you are in your vision, wherever you are in your entrepreneurship, Come, check us out and see whether or not our space can provide services to you. Thank you. Schedule your private tour for North Miami's very first co-working space today. We are located at 685 Northeast 126th Street on the corner of 126th and 7th Ave, just minutes from City Hall. For plans and pricing, visit our site at www.blworkspaces.com 
or call us Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. through 6 p.m. at 305-735-2105. Until then, have a balanced day. Welcome back. We are in the middle of North Miami. Mr. Adam, do you want to address the Asian community as of why they should vote for you as their next chief financial officer? First off, I'm here. I would challenge any of your viewers to even name who the current CFO is because he has not come down here to talk specifically, specifically to the Haitian community. Now, property insurance that we've been talking about has become the number one barrier to new home ownership in the state of Florida. And we all know the best way to build generational wealth is by buying a home. And having this barrier affects the Haitian community far more than it does any other community in the state of Florida. So we need to have somebody who's ready to protect you and protect Floridians. And when it comes to this race, a lot of people, I say, don't vote with your heart. Don't vote with your party. It's time to vote with your wallet. If you want to have a better future and protect your family going forward, I'd appreciate your vote and support this November to be the next chief financial officer of the state of Florida. Thank you, Mr. Adam. And we were very happy and glad to have you in our studio at, uh, in North Miami. Um, and we wish you good luck. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Ou même qui malade, cap chercher clinique sérieux, cap chercher bon docteur, bon spécialiste pour joindre santé au bac pressé pressé. Référence c'est MJD Wellness and Community Center. Yo gen laboratoire près de fait tout test ou gen besoin ak pharmacie pour régler affaire médicament. Yo fait test, traitement ak prévention sida, yo fait test Covid. Quel que soit problème santé ou gen sucre, tension, cholestérol, asthme ak tout autre maladie ou konnen yo, rele yo pour appointement nan 786 534 38 96 avec ou sans assurance ou mettre les nous recevons un petit monde de 5 ans et hop mené petit monde yo adresse 822 nord 10 25 suite suite 103 9 miami florida 33 161 yo l'ouvre lundi pour vendredi de 9h à m pour 5h pm samedi de 10h à m pour 4h pm téléphone à cause 786 534 38 96 786 534 38 96 dans MGD Wellness and Community Center Zafé Santéo c'est priorité nous My name is Naomi Esther Blamir and I'm running for Florida Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services as the granddaughter of farmers a small business owner a community advocate and a mother I am running because we need a strong leader in Tallahassee who's going to advocate for community farming, clean water, small farmers, and a better environment for our families and our children. Do you know regular checkups are a necessity and shouldn't be considered a privilege? Regardless of age or circumstances, regular visits to a healthcare provider should never be taken for granted. MJD Wellness and Specialty Care provides top-tier primary care services in Miami and surrounding counties. Our primary focus is on letting people normalize taking responsibility for their bodies and being cautious of their everyday health. MJD Primary Care will enable you to find potential health issues before they become irreversible deadly diseases. We provide easy access to medical care which aims at focusing on your overall general health. From regular checkups to advanced screening, MJD Wellness and Specialty Care facilitates all. Don't wait for some significantly big problem to occur. Get yourself examined today at MJD. Visit www.mjdwellness.org for more information. La, 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 la. Haïti, c'est belle la mer, c'est belle montagne, avec belle rivière, c'est belle plage, avec pied cocoyer, bel paysage, avec belle couleur. 
Haïti, c'est sans café, qu'a monté dans les les matins. C'est sans la housse qui fait poser. Pour fleurs disait qu'a bougeonné. Haïti, c'est pas simple, cascade pichon avec sodo. C'est Akade, la citadelle. C'est la bâtie à Marigo. Haïti, c'est la vallée, c'est Bossali à Sabrico. C'est mon asel, Big Makaya. C'est Mamla à mon pilbo. Haïti, son douce macos, c'est un point et pistage grillé. Son gicolé qui pour bon force. Son bouteille cola bien glacé. Haïti, son bon griot, son bon fritaille, son bon tasseau, son bon légume avec Syric, son bon diri avec la loup. Haïti, son bon bouillon, son soupe joumou avec tout piment, son bon cassave avec mamba, coca trempé dans un cassin. Haïti, son bon domboué, qu'a mariné non bon sauce bois. Son bois cochon, un bon clairin. Haïti, son bon café du soir. Haïti, chéri, pour jamais aimer. Moi, viens déposer ticket, moi, non, mais. Haïti, chéri, pour jamais Haïti, son belle musique, son bon à pied, son troubadou, son son kata cérémonie, on son kwashi, on son tambou. Haïti, c'était au goût, c'était des ancêtres qui étaient pour nous, c'est là l'esclavage d'aboli, son tel liberté à vodou. Haïti, c'est festival, c'est tissourite, c'est fête champette. Sa animation dans le carnaval, c'est un petit silé qui pas j'en frette. Haïti, son bon bésic, son domino, son bon doigt son réveillon, côté qui gagne bouillon, c'est la gagne qui gagne tête. Haïti, c'est un combi de pays en cap sec les latins, c'est petit machin qui cap descend pour y aller gommer à la vie chère. Haïti, c'est Timounio qui a brevé de yon bel afdi. C'est de l'origol la cap de son. A kon goûte le bras la terri. Haïti, c'est yon batan, nan depi après 12 janvier. C'est la boucle vont mauvais sang. Chaque long t'y la pli fin tombe. Haïti, c'est sous béton pour kon la vraie réalité. C'est yon qui triste, mais grâce à Dieu. C'est pas les seuls man qui ont chanté. Haïti, chéri, pour jamais aimer. Moi, je viens déposer des tickets, moi, je n'en mets. Haïti, chéri, pour jamais adorer. Pas de rien, je ne fais pas de rien, je ne Haïti, chéri, pour jamais Zami auditeur saison taxe arrivé. Nous devons chercher professionnel pour faire taxe nous. Année ça sous pas fil taxe ou na INI Advisors nous pas responsable de VARS parce que taxe compliqué en pile année ça. 
là on choisit I and I Advisors ou choisit Pibo parmi Pibo Tax préparé dans la communauté. C'est des professionnels qui ont plusieurs dizaines d'années à faire taxes individuelles, commerciales, business avec organisation. Ou vous allez ouvrir de 8h du matin pour 8h du soir, ce petit dimanche pour arriver samedi. Ils n'ont pas chargé de l'argent. En plus, si vous avez besoin, vous avez un advance up to 6 000 dollars sous comme taxe ou à adresse 829 10 25 suite 9 Miami Florida 3361 téléphone 305 640 80 35 305 640 80 35 Relio l'offre taxe ou dans INI Advisors vous nous taillez papier gratis pour vous Hi my name is Naomi Blamir author coach and businesswoman I am here in our magnificent space balancing life workspace. Today is just an amazing day for us as an organization, for our vision and the trajectory of our future. Balancing Life Workspace is a space designed with you in mind. We've created a space where you can connect, create, and cultivate. It is an affordable workspace for the freelancer, for the independent contractor, for the startup, or for the person who's looking to downsize. Wherever you are in your vision, wherever you are in your entrepreneurship, Come, check us out and see whether or not our space can provide services to you. Thank you. Schedule your private tour for North Miami's very first co-working space today. We are located at 685 Northeast 126th Street on the corner of 126th and 7th Ave, just minutes from City Hall. For plans and pricing, visit our site at www.blworkspaces.com. Or call us Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. through 6 p.m. at 305-735-2105. Until then, have a balanced day. And here's my friend, Jennifer and Kent. We'd like to welcome you to our beautiful hometown, the city of North Miami. If I had to describe the city of North Miami, I would describe it as a, a hidden gem. That's definitely what I would call it. Right near us here, we have Pepper Park, beautiful courts. They actually just redid them. Uh, and it's a fantastic place to play. You'll catch me there three, four times a week. Recreational facilities match up perfectly with what sports planners, event organizers, and visitors want most out of a destination. Each month is celebrated through an array of events that brings out over 50,000 attendees year-round. Warm weather and sunshine invites play for families, visitors, and sporting events. largest city in Miami-Dade County, North Miami is home to over 68,000 residents from all over the world, 800 businesses, and two major universities, Florida International University, as we know it, FIU, and Johnson and & Wales University, making our city one of the most diverse communities in the entire state of Florida. What about the enchanted forest? placed on 22 acres of tropical plants, trees, and animals in the heart of North Miami, offering city beauty, paved trails, pedestrian bridges, facilities, and private pony ride concessions for the kiddies. The city maintains 11 beautiful parks and seven state-of-the-art community centers that offer programs and activities for all ages. My 
favorite place is the E. May Able Public Library. Our newly renovated library is fully equipped with modern and contemporary furnishing, multiple reading rooms, spacious reading areas, innovative technologies, appealing collections, and you can even get a cup of coffee. Soyla Mia is South Florida's next iconic neighborhood, spreading across 183 acres. This master plan community will rise on the largest remaining parcel of undeveloped land in North Miami, east of Biscayne Boulevard. Uh, this dealership, Lexus of North Miami, has been here for six years now. This is the largest, best equipped um, Lexus dealership anywhere in the world. Um, North Miami is a city on the move. We are part of a city that actively encourages new business and makes it easy for these businesses to establish themselves in the city and to do business in North Miami. Being in this area has now enabled us to vastly expand our business. We've gone from selling 100 cars a month at our previous location to six or 700 cars a month here. Uh, this is a wonderful business environment. We are geographically situated um, at the north end of the county in between Aventura, Bell Harbor, Surfside, Sunny Isles. The, the area is centrally located. Um, it's a fabulous location. We're right on Biscayne Boulevard and the area around us is growing at a rapid pace. Um, I also am a member of the local Chamber of Commerce, and I see new businesses moving into the area all the time. The mayor's office, uh, the, the county commission, the city commission are all very pro-business and very proactive, and everyone here in the city stands ready, willing, and to help uh, new businesses get established in the area. So this is, this is a growing area. There's great access to retail. Um, there's a new Whole Foods in the neighborhood. And uh, I would recommend this area highly to anyone looking to ro relocate in South Florida. Jennifer's Preference is the Contemporary Art Museum, which brings thousands of visitors each year and offers educational programs geared toward the community and its diverse population. MOCA continues to provide an extraordinary experience through the popular jazz concert outdoors the last Friday of each month. We'll be very happy to see you there. From our city to you, welcome and see you soon. Ou même qui malade, cap chercher au clinique sérieux, cap chercher bon docteur, bon spécialiste pour jouer une santé au bac pressé pressé. Référence à ce MJD Wellness and Community Center. Yo gen laboratoire pour de faire tout test ou gen besoin avec pharmacie pour régler affaires médicaments. Yo fait test traitement avec prévention sida, yo fait test covid. Quel que soit problème santé ou gen ya sucre, tension, cholestérol, asthme et toute autre maladie ou qu'on yo, relé yo pour appointement dans 786 534 38 96 avec ou sans assurance ou mettre les le recevoir de 5 ans et hop mené timounio adresse 822 nord 10 25 suite suite 103 9 miami florida 33 161 yo l'ouvre lundi pour le vendredi de 9h à m pour 5h pm samedi de 10h à m pour 4h pm téléphone encore 786 534 38 96 786 534 38 96 dans mgd wellness and community center zafé santé ou c'est priorité nous my name is naomi esther blamir and i'm running for florida commissioner of agriculture and consumer services as the granddaughter of farmers a small business owner a community advocate and a mother I am running because we need a strong leader in Tallahassee who's going to advocate for community farming, clean water, small farmers, and a better environment for our families and our